So this is chapter five, section one, page 348 in your books. If you want to go there and look at it, you can. We are doing what's called the fundamental trigonometric, trig trigonometric identities. You got home worksheet number one, which all of you have on your desk. Is this one right here? So you all take a look at this on the front. This is also on Canvas. It was on there last week. You were supposed to try the first five. Anybody trying? That was part of what you were supposed to do last week. And then on the back, what do you notice is on the back of that page? Those are the answers. Okay, so what we're trying to do today is we're trying to take those functions right there, all those expressions, and we want to simplify them as much as we can, and the goal is to get them down to one expression. Now, if you look at one of those answers down there, problem number nine, there's two trig functions, so sometimes you can't do it. Um, we may be having, we're going to have a three-chance quiz on these. We're going to have ten questions, and we have a fire drill right now, so I'm going to pause the video, go out the door and across the parking lot, over across the far side. And I'll be out there in a second. So again, we're doing fundamental uh, trig functions today. We're trying to simplify all those expressions down to a single variable or, or a trig function, and it could just be a number. And we're doing worksheet one today. You were supposed to try to start it the other day. We're going to have a three-chance quiz on this, and there's ten problems. And each quiz gets a little harder, so you want to get it right the first time. And what we're going to do is we're going to be copying down notes, and the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to pause this, is we're going to make a slider. We're going to make a slider for you to practice these things, kind of like a, a sheet for you to practice. Now, sometimes in the past, we have used these sliders on the tests and quizzes, but I don't know. I'm going to show you where all the identities come from. Now, over here on the left, this up here is the unit circle that we worked on for probably a month at least, maybe five weeks, six weeks, the unit circle, and then we had all this information right here from the unit circle, that the sine value was the y value from up here. So in other words, if we wanted the sine of an angle, we would take this y value. The y value out of the ordered pair was the sine, and then cosine was the x value, so whatever was here, that was the cosine value. And then tangent was the y over x. And then what did we do with all what did we do with the answer for sine to get cosec? Anybody remember? What did we do? Anybody tell me? What did we do with the answer we got for sine to get cosec? Like let's say I had sine was radical three over two. What did I do with radical three over two to get cosec? I flipped it. I flipped it upside down. They're reciprocals. These are reciprocals. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. You remember doing this? And then I rationalized the bottom. means I got the radical out of the bottom. Okay, well, that is a reciprocal identity. So what that means is the reciprocal of sine is, is 1 over cosecant theta. Sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Okay? Cosecant is reciprocal of sine, so cosecant equals 1 over sine theta. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, so cosine is 1 over secant theta. Secant is 1 over cosine theta. Tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent, so tangent equals 1 over cotangent theta. And cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's 1 over tangent theta. So those are the six reciprocal identities. You should hopefully already know those because we've been doing the six trig functions. We did that for probably anywhere from four to seven weeks of flipping them over. Now, quotient identities. Let's, let's see if we can figure this out. Tangent has a quotient identity, meaning a quotient is something you can write with a division bar, or a fraction bar, or a fraction. Now, look up here. Okay, I'll let you finish copying those down. The fire drill is taking some time away from us.
Okay, so if you look at tangent over here from what we had, it was y over x, right? What was, what did we say the y value was from the unit circle? Written right over here, right where I'm at in this area. What, what did we say the y was? What's the y equal over here? What did we say y was? I got it written up here, I got it written right there. What did we say y is? Sine. So what I can do is, since sine is y and this top fraction, the top the numerator is y, tangent is going to equal sine theta over, and then x goes on the bottom. What did we say x was? What's x equal? Cosine. So we put cosine underneath this. And then the cotangent is flipping these upside down. It's x over y, so this is cosine theta over sine theta. I'm going to tell you how I memorize this one. I memorize this one because cotangent and cosine both start CO. So cotangent and quotient is cosine over sine. And then flip it over for tangent, sine over cosine. Y'all thumbs, give me a thumbs up if you understand what I just said. You understand what I just said? Okay, all right, I'm going to tell you again. I know that co and co, when you're doing the, the quotient identity, the fraction one, the co and the co go together, so I know cotangent is cosine over sine. And then if I know this one, I flip it upside down for the tangent one, because there's only two of these. Those are the only two quotient ones. Now the next set is the most, well, I think it is the most, Pythagorean identities. There are actually nine of them. There are actually nine of them. And I'm going to go through how we get them all on here as soon as you guys get caught up on your sheets. Are we all past the quotient? And again, remember, you don't want to make these huge because we got more to go. All right, I want to look up here. This is a right triangle right here, right? When we did these, we always made right triangles to the x-axis. And we're getting to Pythagorean identities. What does Pythagorean make pop into your brain? Anything? Pythagorean theorem, remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Y'all remember that? Where c is the hypotenuse? Well, look at this. Isn't that the right triangle? How do x, y, and 1 get an equation from that? Anybody know? x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. One squared. Can anybody tell me what's 1 squared? 1. So we don't need to put the square on the 1. We okay to there? What does x equal? We just talked about it 30 seconds ago, maybe a minute. Cosine. Nope. Cosine. Cosine is x. X is cosine. So this is cosine squared plus, what's y? Sine squared equals 1. Now when they write them, they put sine first. It does not matter. You can put sine squared first or cosine squared first. It doesn't matter. But that right there is the first Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared will always equal one. And you know, I've been doing my graduate math classes. I'm on my last, I got one question left to do on my final when I'm done. I'm, I just got goosebumps. I'm so excited to be about that. I almost feel like you guys when it's summer break coming. When it's the last day of school, I feel a little giddy inside. I'm excited. So there are actually every one of these nine come from this one. This one's probably the most important one because you can get the rest from this. So I'm going to show you that we can change the, these around, that I can change and I can take this cosine squared and subtract it to the other side. So if I subtract cosine squared to the other side, sine squared equals one minus cosine squared theta. Y'all get what I did? I took this cosine and subtracted over to there. Y'all see that? So this is another one you need to know. Sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. And likewise, I could take the sine squared one from the first one from up here. And you take this sine squared and subtract it over. So cosine squared is going to equal one minus sine squared. I was just talking to you guys about my grad class. I had to use some of this stuff in my grad class. In my advanced calculus class, I had to use some of this stuff. 
and some more stuff we're going to do later called polar polar coordinates. I had to use this stuff for polar coordinates in my advanced calculus class. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you that this stuff you're using now, when you go to college, you're going to probably have to take math classes. And you're going to have to use this stuff. It never stops. Okay? If you want me to explain to you why we do it, I can do that too. But all right, I'm going to go to the second group. So I'm going to come over here and write that first one down again because I told you everything we do, every one of these comes from this one, the first one. There's another way to rewrite this. And the other way to rewrite this is if I could divide every single part of this and divide every part of this by sine squared. I'm dividing both sides by sine squared. And this changes the way it looks. Can any of you tell me what is sine squared divided by sine squared? What's it equal? One. So I get a one plus cosine over sine. Did we do a cosine over sine anywhere? Did we have something that was cosine over sine? What was cosine over sine? It's cotangent, right? So what that means, if we have cosine squared over sine squared, we can change that to cotangent squared theta. You see where that's coming from? I mean, give me a thumbs up if you see where that came from. Did you see? All right. And last, what's one over sine? Cosecant. Yeah, get them up here. One over sine is cosecant. So I hope you know that this means it's one over sine times one over sine, right? Which means this is cosecant and this is cosecant, which is cosecant squared. So that's another Pythagorean identity right there. And where you're gonna use these is you can take two different things and change them to one because you're gonna simplify. Okay, now you remember how we got these other two down here? We're gonna get the other two of this the same way. So I can take this one I can take that one and subtract it to the other side. And that's a different one. And then I can take the cotangent and subtract it to the other side. So there's six out of the nine. Now we're gonna come back over here and I'm gonna show you where the last three come from. I just divided all these by sine squared, right? What else could I have I divided all those by that would have simplified one to a one? Cosine squared. Yeah, see that's cosine squared. If I divide all of these by cosine squared, we can write it a different way. So what does sine over cosine equal from back over here? Tangent, so that means I can make this tangent squared theta plus what's cosine over cosine? One. Anything divided by itself is a one plus one is going to equal what's one over cosine equal from our reciprocals? So this is secant squared. This is the last Pythagorean one. And then just like the other ones, I'm going to take turns. I'm going to take and subtract tangent squared over. And I can take the one and subtract it over. So these are the nine Pythagorean identities. Right there. And if you know the first one, you can find the rest of them. When I was your age, I had to mess with this one. I had to mess with sine squared plus cosine squared equals one sometimes to get the other ones. Just like I just showed you where they came from. Now I think I've got them all memorized pretty well because I've been doing it for 400 million years back when the dinosaurs were roaming. So those are all the ones we're going to start with right there. Okay? I'm going to go over to the next page when you guys are caught up. Are you all caught up? Are you ready for me to move it on over? Okay, so over on the left of this next page, you need to copy down these notes. This is how we are going to solve them. We're going to do this those three steps over there on the left. 
If you can't read something, you let me know. You can put this in your notebook somewhere. Well, you need it somewhere where you're going to be able to find it. And like I said, we got a bunch more, a bunch more of the identities to do. So I don't know if you want to put it on that blue sheet or not. So step one is we want to change all the trig functions into sine and cosine. Step two is we want to simplify all of the stuff we have using math rules. Every rule you've used since kindergarten, you can still use now. Everything you've learned from kindergarten to right now applies as long as you use the rules. If you do something that is not a rule, it won't be right. And then the last thing, our goal, our goal is to simplify the whole thing to one trig function with no fractions, or it could just be a number, or it could be a number and a trig function. But that's our goal, to get it down to one thing. While well, you guys are writing that down, I'll tell you where we use this. I'm taking this class I'm in right now, if you don't remember, it's called advanced calculus. Does anybody know what's the easiest graph to deal with? Does any of you know what the easiest graphs are to deal with, to find stuff when you graph a lot? What was the first thing you guys started graphing? Nope, you did something before parabolas. Back in pre-algebra. First thing you, huh? You do, you, we've done it. A line, a line, y equals mx plus b, right? Y equals mx plus b. Then we went to parabolas, and then we did cubics and square roots and rationals and all of those. Now I'm in three-dimensional math in this advanced calculus. So what we use this stuff for is we make it simplify this stuff from three-dimensional to two-dimensional so we can deal with it. That's what it's used for. This stuff can help us make three-dimensional objects into two-dimensional. Have you ever seen a, top, a topography map where they take like a mountain and they show the different layers on a sheet of paper like you're looking straight down? That's what I've been doing a lot of in calculus. Instead of having three dimensions, we smush it all down on a flat plane so it's easier to deal with. Yes, sir? Number two says simplify using math rules. Simplify using math rules. And number three says the goal is to get to one trig function with no fractions. That's the goal. Well, I already showed you one of the answers on the back. I can't remember what number it did not. We couldn't simplify it to one. It was sine times cosine. I think it's two sine times cosine. So we're going to do four problems off your homework right now. I'm all over it. We ready? Yeah, it's good to be back. We ready? Is everybody caught up? All right, step one. We want to change everything. By the way, on this, on the not the first one, but the second one. I'm going to show you a shortcut to do it after we do the long way. Okay. Oh, I almost also forgot. There are three more things I want to show you over here on this other side. You guys have a formula sheet that's got all those ones I we just put on the front page. There's a formula sheet there that's got them all on there. Okay, this one. Y'all got this thing right? The only ones we haven't done are the ones at the bottom, so I'm going to show, we're going to do those three at the bottom called the multiplication identities. Okay? So put down multiplication identities. They come, they come from these three things right here. These three problems right here is where they come from. Now, in math class, have you seen an equal sign with an arrow right there? You see that arrow I put there at the end? That means what I'm about to write comes from that problem. So a little, uh, little review. If I had a problem that said this and told you to solve for x, I got a 3 x over 2 equals 3, what would you do to solve for x? Can anybody tell me? You don't have to write this down. What would I do to x over 2 to solve equals 3 to solve for x? This thing right here. x over 2 equals 3, how do I, what would I do? Yeah, I'd multiply this 2 over here, wouldn't I? Right? And have 3 times 2, so it's 6, right? Okay, well, if I take this one and I multiply that sine over to the other side, that will give me sine theta cosecant theta equals 1. You see where it comes from? 
Thumbs up on where it comes from or not? Yes? Dan? Okay. Lexi? Okay. This next one, if I take cosine and multiply it over to secant, just like that 2 over to the 3. Cosine times secant also is going to equal 1. And the last one, if I take tangent over here times cotangent, tangent theta times cotangent theta also equals 1. Those are called the multiplication identities. They all equal 1 when you multiply them. Okay, I forgot to put those down when we, or I forgot to do those when we are going through here. Okay, we're going to come back over here. Right now we're going to do number 13 right now. Hopefully we get through all these and uh, we got about 10 minutes left. So the first thing I want to do is change everything into sine and cosine. So what am I going to do to sine to make it sine or cosine? What can I do from all those identities we copied down? What do you got to do to sine to make it either sine or cosine? Nothing is already sine. So you just leave a sign. You don't change sines and cosines. Leave them alone. Now we want to look on our identities, and there should be one over there that cosecant equals something with a sine or a cosine. Does anybody see cosecant equal to something with a sine or a cosine? Just yell it out if you see it. That's right. It is 1 over sine x. That's a reciprocal one. So I change cosecant into terms of sine. Then I've got a minus sine, so I keep the minus. Secant. There should be one on the front page. All those we just copied down, a secant can be written in terms of sine and cosine. Anybody see it? It is 1 over cosine. Then we got plus, and I got tangent x. There should be an identity in there somewhere that I can change tangent into sine and or cosine. Does anybody see one? That's a quotient one. We write this as sine over cosine. So do we see that we've changed everything into terms of sines and cosines? Then you can put have numbers in there too. Are we thumbs up with where that came from? Now I'm going to tell you something. You might think this looks easy with me doing it. This stuff is hard as all get out. Okay? So even though this looks easy and you think it isn't bad, when you get on your own, it's going to freak you out. It's okay to be freaked out for a couple days. Okay? Just don't quit. The only time you're guaranteed to fail is if you quit. Keep trying. All right, now we're going to do step two. We're going to use math rules. Does anybody see a math rule I can do up there to kind of simplify this? What would you do if you saw something like this on a problem? Does anybody have any guesses or ideas? It's order PEMDAS is basically what I'm asking you. What? Okay, you could get common denominators and solve, but there's something that's faster. Order of operations. I'm going to distribute property. You see the sign outside the parentheses? So I'm going to take this sign times this first thing, and now I'm going to come back and take this sign times this second thing. So this is sine over 1, so when I multiply times this first thing, I get sine x over sine x, because sine times 1 on the top is sine, and 1 times sine on the bottom is sine. So I'm going to take sine x times 1, which is sine x, and this 1 on the bottom times that cosine is cosine x, and I got plus the sine x over cosine x still out here on the side. Do not let things disappear. Just no disappearing and reappearing. you got to write them down every stinking time. Now I've got three what written there. Three what? Sine over sine is a what? A fraction. I got three fractions. To put fractions together, what do you got to have? Common denominator. Anybody see a common denominator? Anyone don't have common denominators? Is that denominator and that denominator the same? So what do you do when you have common denominators? Add and subtract the top, right? So let's look what we got. We got a negative sign 
plus a sine, a negative sine over cosine, and a positive sine over cosine. What do you get when you add opposites? Zero. They cancel out. So these two things give me zero. What's sine over sine? What's anything divided by itself? One. One minus zero is? That one's done. Look at the answers on the back of your paper. What's paper 13? It better say one. Did it say one? So see, you can check. You can check. Question? Okay, we're going to go over here and do 26. Now I'm going to do 26 a long way, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut. All right? So the long way. We just did this tangent, right? See this tangent right here to change sine and cosine? So it's the same one every time. So I'm going to write tangent as sine x over cosine x. And then cotangent, you might remember what that one is? Cotangent is what? Cosine over sine. Cosine over sine. And secant. We just did secant right here, right here didn't we? Secant was 1 over cosine, so it stays 1 over cosine. Questions so far? Now, if you're multiplying fractions and you got the same factor on top and bottom, what are you going to do? What can I do with this sign on top and that sign on the bottom? They reduce to ones. I can reduce this to a one and this to a one. What does this cosine on the bottom and that cosine on top do? These reduce the ones. So I get one over one over one over cosine. Now I have a fraction divided by a fraction. Does anybody remember the rule when you have a fraction divided by a fraction? Of which one? The bottom one. Flip the bottom one over and multiply by the reciprocal. Does anybody know what cosine over one gives me? So, look at the answer for 26. I hope it says cosine. Does it? Somebody look real quick. By the way, you want to do these on notebook paper. There's not enough room on your on your uh, sheet worksheet to do them. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut method. You ready? And the more you learn these, the easier you're going to see this. So I'm going to go back over here. Do you see at the top I got tangent, cotangent? Right? Do you remember that those are reciprocals? You remember that these are reciprocals, so that tangent times cotangent is one. So if I know this, I could have, I could have said, well, hey, this is going to be one over secant x. And 1 over secant is a reciprocal. And what's 1 over secant equal? Cosine x. So see, I could have done that faster if I know my if I knew my identities better. Do you, are you thumbs up what I'm saying there? Any of the identities that are true, you can use them. So if you use some of them, they'll be faster than other ways. Right now, I think you should change them all to sine and cosine, and as we go, we'll get better. Lexi, you in there? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, question? Okay, here we go. Next one. We're going to come down here and do 12. Segan. How can I write Segan? Thank you. We've already done cotangent and tangent twice, so they never change what they give you. So I'm using the quotient identities for those. Now I have to get on the bottom, I've got to get a common denominator. i got to get a common denominator on the bottom. So you got sine x on this denominator, cosine x over there. Does anybody know what the common denominator is? You know what you do when you're looking for a denominator to get common denominators? You take whatever's under one denominator, not under the other one, and you multiply the top and the bottom by that. So I took this cosine. And I brought it over here and multiplied it by both sides. You see on this side, what am I going to multiply this side by? Look over here at this bottom. Sine x over sine x. Because you're allowed to multiply by 1. So when I do this, I've still got 1 over cosine on the top. Then when I take cosine times cosine, I believe that's cosine squared x. 
I got a plus sign, and I think sine times sine is sine squared x. And don't I already have a common denominator with those two, a cosine x and a sine x? I can put my numerators over my common denominator. Do any of you know what cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals? Look at your identities. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals something. It equals 1. So I'm going to stick 1 in for that. So that gives me 1 over cosine x over 1 over cosine x sine x. What do I have again now? I have two fractions. So you flip the bottom fraction over, multiply by the reciprocal. What will this cosine and this cosine do? One on top, one on bottom. What do they do? They reduce to ones. So I end up with just sine x. Okay? So that's your uh, that's what you're trying to do on that homework. Do the best you can. And we will uh, keep 